Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Moonbound Silence Episode 15 Chapter 77-81 Melody's POV Finally! Finally, the day is has come where those be, just get what they deserve. Terrine Fields, Selfish Number 1 She K, L L E D Kendrick's mom and then had the nerve to fake the paternity of her pup to try and get Keaton. Even after getting caught about her lie, Jasper spared her life, and then she had the audacity to try and K, L L Irene, another beta female. Then you have number two Layla Martinez. I had a bad feeling about her when she told me she was saving her V, virginity for someone special. I knew who she meant when I saw how she looked at my brother when we're in high school. That's why I warned her to stay away from him, but no. She had to go and spread her legs for him, and he took the bait. Jasper was an IT, but I didn't put all the blame on him. He was upset he hadn't received a mate, and in the moment of his vulnerability, she s. adduced him. Instead of just leaving it at that, she had to go and fall for him. It wasn't enough though, she had to go become crazy obsessed to the point she almost k. lled him not once. But twice. First the accident, then Saren's rejection. I could not believe just how selfish she was. Our pack lost its Luna because of her. Even though she is technically back, and will be the Luna again, it won't be Saren, it will be Megan. Even if the pack is starting to accept her because well, Megan and Saren are exactly the same, it won't ever be 100% the way it was before. And that was all on Layla. After changing into some clothes I didn't care for anymore, I went down to meet everyone at the dungeon. When I got here, Kendrick, Keaton, and Dylan were waiting. Angel, I don't like you being here, Kendrick said to me. Try and stop me, I said crossing my arms. I'm not going to, because I know I can't. I'm just saying, I don't like it, he replied, and I nodded my head. A few minutes later, Jasper came to us and was in nothing but basketball shorts. Where's Megan? I asked him. She's not going to be joining us, but she did request I leave Layla alive long enough for her to say something to her. What for? Dylan asked. We all looked at him. I totally forgot he has no idea Megan is Saren. I'll tell you later Dad, Kendrick said. Dylan just nodded and we all went down to the dungeon. As soon as the door opened, we could hear their screams. It was music to my ears. I may sound like a sociopath, but one has to understand, these two hurt people we cared about for their own greed, and I'm not one to stand by and watch people I love get hurt. Hell to the ing no. I will throw down with anyone that comes near the ones I care about. When we got down the dungeon, Terrine and Layla were in two different cells on opposite sides of the dungeon. Milan and Angelo were with Layla while Jason and Owen were with Terrine. I wasn't surprised to see the twins working together on Layla. Milan and Angelo were the first two pack members that Saren befriended when she first arrived, and they cared about her deeply. Enough. Jasper commanded and everyone stopped what they were going. I saw that no one struck their faces. Good, I can be the first. Bring them out and string them up outside of the respective cells. Jasper. Please, don't do this. Layla shouted as Milan and Angelo dragged her from her cell. That's Alpha to you, Milan said and punched her in the gut, hard. I couldn't stop the smirk that formed across my face. Jasper, he turned around to look at me. I just raised my brows. Before you guys pull them off the ground, sit them down on the chairs first, Jasper said. 
They did as he said and as soon as the duo was restrained, I walked up to them. I couldn't decide who I wanted to hit first. What do you want? Terine muttered. I was trying to decide whose face I was going to break first, I replied. Thanks for volunteering, Terine, as soon as she lifted her face and I punched her as hard as I could instantly breaking her jaw. I saw her spit out blood, and I saw the blood on my knuckles. You, you broke my jaw, she slurred. Good, I'd like to break your entire face until you're unrecognizable, but I should leave some fun for my mate and my in-laws. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to give you a new face. After all, you did K, LL one's mate, and the other's mother, I gave her a smug look as fear took over her eyes when she looked towards Kendrick, Keaton, and Dylan. I walk over to Layla. Now it's your turn, as soon as she looked up, and popped her straight in the face breaking her nose upon contact. She screamed when I did, and it was just made me feel so much better. You. She screamed as blood flooded out of both her nostrils and down her face. I grabbed her chin and looked at her straight in the eyes. If you think that hurt, just wait until Jasper is through with you, I whisper in her ear. Dot, leave, Jasper commanded. I'm going, I replied and stepped back and went over to Kendrick. Do your worst, babe, say out loud and leave the dungeon. When I get back upstairs, Hugo and Maddox are at the door standing guard now. Beta, they both bowed their heads. No one, and I mean no one is allowed down there. Yes, Beta, they both responded, and I made my way to my room to clean up. On my way, I ran into Irene. Mel, is it true? Did Terine get caught admitting everything? It is true. She and Layla are currently being punished in the dungeon. Wow, the Alpha doesn't waste any time does he? Waste time? Irene, he's given them plenty of time to sit back and relax. Jasper was patient because he knew one of them, if not both of them would eventually mess up, and they did, at the same time. I still can't believe what they did. All because they wanted someone who wasn't their mate. Trust me, I know how you feel. Layla even tried to sleep with Kendrick before I accepted him as my mate, thankfully, Kendrick had already accepted me, so turning her down was easy. That and Kendrick said he would never sleep with her, even if he didn't have a mate. What is wrong with them? I mean, I get it, not everyone wants to stay a virgin until they find their mate but that doesn't give someone the right to with the mate bond the way they did. I mean, seriously. No, I get it, no one has the right to with the mate bond, especially in ways that those two did, Irene and talked for a little while longer before I finally went upstairs to my floor and got cleaned up. I could only imagine all the things Jasper and Kendrick have planned for those two home wreckers. Kendrick's POV after Melody left and the door closed, Jasper went over to Layla, and I went over to Terine. We kept them on opposite sides of the dungeon so we could have plenty of room to do what we needed to do. Our pack is normally not this violent, but these are extenuating circumstances. Terine ruined my family. I know my angel did a number on your jaw but I'm going to give you a few minutes to explain to my family and me what the hell it is you were hoping for by Kay, Ling our mother, I tell her. She's breathing hard, spitting out blood, and tears are falling from her eyes, but she doesn't even look up. I nod to Jason and Owen, and they hoist her up into the air by her arms, just like we had Andrea and Sierra. Only Terrine is just a few inches off the ground. I get right under her face and make her make eye contact with me. This is your one and only chance to explain yourself Terrine, in five seconds, this chance is gone, and my family is going to take turns making the last few moments of your life a living hell. You're never going to see Killian ever again, 
and I will personally make sure, he never knows who you were. How dare you, she screams. The fact that I could understand her meant that her wolf had healed part of her jaw. You think I'm going let your innocent pup be tainted and scarred with memories that his birth mother was psychotic, and even sold his life away before he was even conceived? Yeah, I don't think so, I stepped back, and Keaton stepped forward. You know what really irks me right now, Terrine? It's the fact that had Killian actually been mine, I would have lost him anyway, because of you, he gave her a backhanded slap that echoed through the dungeon. I could hear Jasper say something to Layla, but I wasn't paying attention. The fact that Jasper wasn't yelling is what actually kind of freaked me out the most. Even though Layla was plenty yelling. When Jasper was really pissed off, he was cool as a cucumber, and that was the scariest version of Jasper there is. Keaton, I did it because I wanted to be with you, she said softly. UK, LLED my mom because you wanted to be with me? Let me ask you something, Terrine. Say Killian was mine, and I did accept you as a chosen mate, do you honestly think that I would have stayed with you when this all got out? Yes. Then you're stupider than I originally thought. You knew better than anyone how close my mom and I were. Both my brother and I had a great relationship with her, because we had no secrets from her, and you took that away from us. I would have replaced her. You never gave me the chance. You could never replace her. Keaton roared. The relationship between a mother and their young is irreplaceable. If you were actually a decent mother, you would know that. How can say that to me? Are you kidding me? I said and scoffed. Did you forget the small fact that you sold your own son's life away? I shouted at her. I did everything for Killian. I did what I had to do to give him a good life. The fact that you actually believe that is what's really frightening, I tell her. I think that's enough talk, our father said and stepped forward. He wasted no time and gave her another backhanded slap that made her spin in a circle. My wife treated you like you were her own when you lost your parents, you ungrateful little asterisk he shouted at her and slapped her again. She took you under her wing, she taught you to be respectful and kind. She fed you. Clothed you. And how do you repay her? By poisoning her. It's her own fault. She was trying to keep Keaton from me. I've loved Keaton ever since I was fifteen. But when we turned eighteen, and he didn't turn out to be my mate, I was furious with the moon goddess. I went to Lizzie to get her to make Keaton take me as his chosen mate. But she refused. She refused. She said that Keaton had to wait for his own mate and that I had to wait for mine. That the mate bond is not to be messed with. She turned her back on me. She did what any mother would do and wanted what was best for her child. My mom was right. The mate bond is not to be messed with. Look at Layla. I shouted at her. Tell me, Terrine, where is your mate? Keaton asked. I don't know, and I don't care. Is he Killian's father? No. You're his father. You are Keaton. Stop denying IT. I am not his father. Keaton roared again. Why did you kill my wife? My father roared. Terrine didn't answer and just spit out blood from her mouth. My dad punched her across the face this time and in the gut twice. My mother would never condone us hitting a woman, but I think in this case, she would make an exception. Tell me, she stayed silent and this time Keaton grabbed the WH, P with the silver ball bearings. Open the back of her shirt. Keaton shouted. Owen tore it open and Keaton circled around her and gave her five WH, pings making her scream. Why did you kill my mother? He screamed and WH, PPED her five more times. 
Stop, she screamed. Keaton please stop. Tell us what we want to hear. I ordered her in my beta tone. Keaton kept WH, ping her until she finally caved. Ah. Uh, I'll tell you. Keaton stopped WH, ping her. She was panting and whimpering from the pain, and you could see the blood droplets falling from her back. Talk fast, or he's going to keep doing it, I tell her. I K, L L E D her because, she, she caught me on the phone with the dark witch. She, she found out that, I, I was going to. Use dark magic, to make Keaton see me as, his, his, mate. So, what? Instead of getting the potion for Keaton, you traded your non-existent pup's life for the poison to K-L-L her. I asked and she nodded her head. Answer me. Yes. What did you poison her with? My father asked her. I don't know, the dark witch. She, she made it. It's an irreversible black potion, only for, werewolves. I was trying to keep Ajax down, but Keaton had long ago let Chase out, and my father was holding on by a very, very thin thread. You're going to die Terrine, that's not up for discussion, but I can save Killian's life, I tell her. H.H. How? Tell us who his father is, and do not tell us that it's my brother. Who's his biological father? A guard at Golden Moon, Alpha Richard's pack. How did you meet him? At a club for our kind. Kendrick, what are you doing? Keaton asked me. Killian is innocent, and he has a father out there, and we know the dark witch Terrine did business with, we can get Killian to his rightful family. What? Terrine asked. Oh. I knew I left out a key piece of information, I said tapping my chin. Svetlana sends her regards, and so does the Luna Saren. You see, they're the ones that figured out your little secret, her eyes got wide. Yeah, you see, we've known you K, L L E D our mom, we were just waiting to find proof, or for you to admit it. You knew this whole time. Why do you think Jasper didn't banish you when you lied about Killian's paternity? Jasper wanted to get you for what you did to us, to this pack. UK, LLED a ranked female for your own personal greed, and that is punishable by death. The elders have already received your taped confession, and they'll be receiving the recording of this interrogation as well. Your death was signed a long time Terrine. Now it's time we get it over with, I nodded at Keaton and he wh, pped her again repeatedly. My dad grabbed a syringe full of wolfsbane and silver nitrate from the box we had, and he stabbed her in the neck with it. <laughs> her screams could break glass. She started to growl and hiss and I could see her wolf was now being affected by everything. Keaton, enough. He stopped and gave me a disapproving look. I didn't need to look at her back to know that it was completely raw and bleeding. The blood on the floor and spattered on the wall behind her and all over Keaton told me everything. She was crying and whimpering and panting as she was slowly starting to die. Dad, I think you should have the honors of avenging Mom's death. Keaton dropped the WH, P and came back in front of Terrine. Keaton. Please, Terrine begged breathlessly. My brother gave her one last look and just left the dungeon. She broke down crying and for once in her pathetic life, Terrine's tears were genuine. Terrine, I hope you realize that everything that has happened until this point is no one's fault but your own. The moment you decided to try and use dark magic to get my brother to be your mate is when your fate was decided, I tell her but she didn't respond and just kept crying. Dad, it's up to you to decide how she dies. She dies the same way your mother dies, I looked at him, and Terrine shot her head up. Find the witch and ask for the same poison that was used on your mother. Dylan. Please. 
I beg of you. You don't know what that poison can do. I know plenty well what it can do, you stupid, he shouted at her. I watched as the love of my life, the mother to my children suffered for over a month while the poison ate away at her body. Now, you will suffer the same fate. But unlike Lizzie, you're going to suffer down here, alone. Dylan please, my dad said nothing more and walked away. Jason, W.H., P. her twenty-five times for each crime she committed. Lying about the paternity, K., ling my mom, and attacking Irene. You got it. When you're done, throw her into her cell until I can get the witch here with the poison, Jason nodded and I left, but not before hearing Jason and Owen start W.H., ping her again. I knew exactly what was going to happen. As soon. As I left the dungeon, I went to go find Melody and Leanne. I needed to hold my girls. Chapter 78 Jasper's POV After we separated Layla and Tareen to opposite sides of the dungeon, Kendrick and his family took care of Tareen, while I took care of Layla. Before I did anything, however, Milan decided that one hit from Melody wasn't enough, and gave Layla a beating the abdomen until she was coughing up blood. Milan, enough, I can't have you K-ling her already, I say to her. What? I still have to interrogate her, Milan rolled her eyes and backed away. I walked over to Layla, but just close enough to have a conversation with her without yelling. I couldn't say the same for Kendrick and his brother because they were already shouting. Layla, I'm going to you ask a series of questions, and I want you to answer me honestly. If I don't like your answer, Angelo is going to pump you full of wolf Spain and silver nitrate. Jasper, please. Question number one, did you drug me the night I slept with you? No. Question number two, did you try to K-L-L Saren when she first got here? No. I nodded to Angelo and he plunged the syringe into the nape of her neck. Ah, she started to trash and scream but couldn't do anything because she was hanging several inches off the ground by her arms. Remember what I said would happen if I didn't like your answer, she was panting and crying. Let's try this again, did you try to K-LL your Luna by shifting into your wolf? Yes. Why? She attacked me first. I looked at Angelo and plunged another syringe. This time into her H, P. Ah. Okay. Okay. Why did you try to K, L L Saren? Because I hated her. She took you from me and she had your mark on her. Were you behind the human kidnappings? What? How did you? Answer the question. I shouted and signaled Angelo again. Please no. I'll answer. Angelo stopped with his arm in the air ready to stab her with the needle. Milan was on the other side of me filling up some more. She looked a little too happy doing it. When I found out about Saren being Alpha Ash's first mate, I went to Blood Moon to leverage them. I told them that if they helped me get rid of Saren, you will refer to her as Luna. I commanded. I told them if they helped me get rid of the Luna, that I would make sure you never remembered her. What was your original plan? We tried to use real rogues, but there weren't enough of them, so we hired a dark witch to create a potion that would turn humans in rogues. She said she knew of another witch that had a potion that would help weak rogues become stronger, so she stole it and changed it to cater to human DNA. When we administered the potion, she would say a dark spell. It's only supposed to last 24 hours, then the subject dies. Who kidnapped the humans? Emma and Kale did. They would s. adduce or drug them and take them back to the bunker where the dark witch would be waiting. Who k? LLED Victor's girlfriend. Emma did. Where are the remaining humans? 
a bunker located just northwest of Blood Moon's primary pack house. It's actually hidden in the hills behind the trees. You can't see it until you actually go to it. How many total? Just over 70. Jasper, that means some of the missing persons we found are false positives then, Milan said to me and I just nodded. Milan, go tell my dad and have him call the elders council, she bowed her head and left. Though I'm sure she wasn't happy she was going to miss out on the fun. Were you behind my accident? No, I just need you incapacitated. I didn't know the witch was going to cause you to get into an accident. Where were you when it happened? I was the driver in the other car, the one that was waiting at the embankment. Why? Why what? Why did you up my life? Up your life? I was trying to make your life better. Only I'm worthy enough to be your Luna. She screamed in my face. You always said you wanted someone pure to be your Luna. I was pure. I gave you my purity, Jasper. But the next morning, you weren't even in my room anymore. You didn't leave a note. You stopped talking to me. You gave me the cold shoulder. It was a one-night stand. I told you from the very beginning that I wanted my mate. Saren wasn't pure. She was mated to Kale first which means she inged him too. Angelo didn't even wait for my command. He stuck her with another syringe. Her screams were echoing in the dungeon. Saren was the purest of the pure. She was pure when I found her, and she stayed pure until the morning I marked her. The same day you tried to K-L-L her. No, she wasn't. Kale said. Ash lied to you, you stupid, I snapped at her. Saren wouldn't touch him with a ten-foot pole. He rejected her the morning of her birthday and she accepted it immediately thereafter. No, 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 she's the one who lied. She's a lying conniving. Layla, there's one thing you need to know about Saren and me. You see, I didn't just find her at Blood Moon, I was reunited with her. What? Saren has been my fated mate since I was 18. I knew Saren Calloway, the heir to Iron Hollow was going to be my Luna. My parents knew it, her parents knew it, and I knew it. I've known her since she was born. My mom was her mom's best friend. When she was 10, and I was 18, I saw her again, and I felt the mate bond between us. Because we're both pure blood alphas we were drawn to each other. But I thought she died when Blood Moon slaughtered Iron Hollow, but the Moon Goddess was on my side because eight years later, I found her again. No, no, no. So, that's why even though I forgot Saren for those weeks my memories were gone, my heart and my wolf knew that she was my mate, and I fell in love with her again. Even though she rejected me. Wait, what you when your memories were gone? Oh, did I forget to mention, I've had my memories back for months now. What? That's not possible. That can only happen if, she paused, and I just smirked. The Dark Witch, she reversed the spell. Yet. Yeah. Why? I sold her my soul. She's been on my side. Or should I say Saren's side he moment she found what Saren is. What do you mean what she is? As you know, Saren had powers, and we explained it as her being a blessed wolf, but the truth is, she's not just a blessed wolf, she is the blessed wolf. Saren is what's called a primordial, a very rare and powerful wolf. Saren is a true alpha and our dear friend Svetlana has been waiting for her for quite a long time now. They share a common enemy, and you know the saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. No. 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 That's stupid. She's been lying to me. Yes she has, and it's because I've asked her to. What? 
Layla, I've known that you were the one behind all of this since before I even got my memories back. Svetlana came to me and offered me a truce, and she even helped me find Saren. What? What do you mean by find Saren? I guess it was time that learned the truth. I mind-linked Milan to bring Megan down to the dungeon. A few minutes later, they both came down, and I saw Keaton and his dad leaving. Not too long after, Kendrick left as well. Angelo, get Owen, and leave, I don't want him to know just yet. Yes, Alpha. Should I get the popcorn? Milan said sarcastically and I just looked at her. What? What is she doing here? Layla shouted referring to Megan. You wanted to know what I meant by finding Saren, did you not? I replied. What does this have to do with that cunt? I gave her a backhanded slap. Jasper, did you just hit me? If you refer to her as anything else but Luna, I will do more than just slap you, I say while holding her chin and gritting my teeth. I saw the tears in her eyes, but they did nothing for me. I let go of her face and backed away. Now, I'll tell you what Megan has to do with Saren, or better yet, I think we'll show you, I turned to Megan, and I watched as she tore one of Olivia's calling cards. About a minute later, Olivia appeared in the dungeon. Why am I in a dungeon? she asked. Olivia, I need you to drop it, Megan said to her. Drop what? Olivia replied. She looked around and saw what was going on. Oh, I see, okay, she stepped back and snapped her finger, dropping Saren's cloak. What? Layla screamed. And then no. 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 It's been you this whole time. Yes, it has, Saren responded. Tricking you into thinking that I was just some she-wolf Jasper met was all too easy, Layla. I could have easily came back in my true form, but we all knew if I did, you would have stopped at nothing to try and hurt me and our son. So, it was Jasper's idea for me to come back in my disguise, to get you to show your true colors. Jasper. How could you do this me? I didn't do sh, t to you. You brought this one yourself when you decided to put your wants above everyone else's safety. My safety? I could have died. Saren could have died and she was pregnant. I roared at her. You. This your fault, she screamed at Saren. Why can't you just go away? You belong with Ash. Trash belongs with Trash, she screamed, and I slapped her again. Jasper, she whimpered. Saren touched my arm and I immediately calmed down. I saw the flash of jealously across Layla's face when she saw that our bond was strong again. Get away from him. Why? Why did you bring her back? Because I love her and we belong together. I told you already, she and were fated mates long before you and I even knew each other, I answered. Want to know why I know that? It's because even when I didn't have my memories, and she was in disguise, the fates brought us together. I met her as Megan while she was still pregnant with Sam, and I was drawn to her. I was in love with Saren, but I was drawn to Megan because Megan is Saren. No. Ah. Uh, why? Why won't you love me like I love you Jasper? 1. Because I never had feelings for you, even remotely. 2. I almost died because of you, and 3. Those without a soul don't even know the meaning of love. So, what, you're going to K, LL me, for her. He's not going to K, LL you. Saren said before I could answer, I am. Saren. I grabbed her shoulders. What are you doing? This is between me and her, Jasper. She tried to K, LL me once already, she almost K, 
LLEDU, and then she took you away from me. Even though we found each other again, she still put a wedge between us. Our son could have grown up without his father because of her and thinking about that just makes my blood boil. This is as personal for me as it is for you, but I also won't allow you to k-l-l a woman. That's not who you are. Saren, I'm an alpha, it's part of my job to hand out executions, when they're necessary. I'm an alpha too, and I'm this Pax Luna. It's also my job to make these decisions, and my decision is final, I let out a big sigh and nodded my head. Saren turned her gaze to Layla. I watched as Layla was levitated off of the chains and back on the ground. What? Layla said surprised. Just then, her chains broke. Shift, Saren commanded. What? I said shift, she said in her Luna tone. I had never heard it before. Layla's wolf adheres to the command and she began to shift. Saren shifted as well but what caught me by surprise was that Callie was still baby blue. I thought her wolf was supposed to be pink, Milan said to me and I just shrugged my shoulders. Her wolf has changed form because she has come into her full powers, Olivia said. What? So, Callie being a different color doesn't have to do with the magical cloak. No, it does not. Her wolf was always meant to change colors, it's the one thing that's different about her. Pink was her premature stage, this baby blue is her mature stage, Milan and I just looked at each other not knowing what to say. We would have to table this discussion for after the fight. Because I still wasn't marked, I wasn't able to communicate with her, but I made sure that she could hear what I was thinking. Saren, you can do this. Whatever you do, do not let up. She won't hesitate to k-l-l you if you give her the chance. Callie huffed once indicating she heard me. I watched as they circled each other. Layla's wolf Athena was bigger than Callie, but I knew that Callie was powerful because she was a natural-born alpha. She also the biggest advantage because she could hear Layla's thoughts. Athena made the first move which I could tell Callie was anticipating and dodged. The cell we were in was small for two wolves, so Athena ran straight into the concrete wall. She quickly shook it off and lunged for Callie again. I already knew Callie and Saren had this one. Layla was fighting with anger and wasn't think about her moves. She wanted to get Saren. Saren on the other hand was calculating her moves, reading Layla's thoughts, and waiting for an opening. Was it unfair that Saren could read minds? Sure it was, but we're all way past playing fair after all the sh t Layla did to break us up. Saren, do not you use your powers. Olivia shouted. What are you doing? I shouted at her. She cannot use her powers. The more she uses them, the better chance the vampire can hone in on her location, I grunted having forgotten about that. I watched on as Callie and Athena were full on boxing now. Athena slashed at Callie and made contact, but she healed almost instantly. That alone caught Athena off guard, which Callie used the opening to SH back, making Athena whimper from the pain. Callie jumped on her back in Athena's neck. The cries that came out of Athena were real, as Callie used her super strength to inflict as much damage as possible without K-ling her right away. Callie jumped off and kicked Athena with her hind legs making Athena collide with the concrete wall. I guess all that training with William was finally coming in handy for her. I suddenly got a mind link from Layla. Jasper. Please. Get her to stop hurting me. You brought this on yourself, Layla. You want to be Luna, well then, you're going to have fight for it. You always bragged that you were stronger than her, so prove it. Jasper. I'm sorry. Too late for that. I cut off our link and blocked her out. 
She tried to run from Callie who was stalking towards her, but Callie caught her by the hind leg and pulled her with full force. I heard the bones breaking as Callie practically chomped down. She pulled her again and then threw her into the other wall. I knew for a fact that since Saren couldn't use her powers, she was going to brute strength. Is it wrong that I want our mate right now? No, it's not Blade, because I do too. Callie was moving with grace and fluidity. Almost as if she were dancing. Her steps were calculated and planned. She never did anything without thinking, while Layla had been acting on impulse and impulse alone. Her impulse was the main reason why she would never make a good Luna. That. And she was CKY and full of herself. It wasn't a secret that she was disliked by many, but instead of trying to fit in, she always did things her way. She always made it seem like she was better than everyone, and she bragged about being Luna one day. I often wonder where her mate is and if she ever did meet him. But I guess I'll never know. My thoughts were interrupted with a wailing cry shook the cell and I saw that Callie had ripped off Athena's hind leg, the one that she didn't break. Oh, gross, Milan almost gagged. Wow, that was a clean bite, Olivia said, almost sounding impressed. Callie then jumped on Athena again and latched on her neck. They rolled around on the ground as Athena tried to get Callie off of her, but Callie's had a secure bite and it was one that could suffocate Athena, but she didn't. She let go and stood to her feet. She was prolonging Layla's suffering. Athena struggled to stand, as she was bleeding all over. If Saren didn't K, LL her right away, she would probably end up bleeding to death. Athena stood on her remaining three legs, and she huffed. I thought she was going to try and charge again, but she didn't. What she did next surprised us all. She submitted. What the, Milan said. Did she just submit? Callie growled at Athena, and then they both shifted back. Layla was fully disfigured and covered in wounds. She was pale and turning blue at the same time from blood loss. Athena. What are you doing? Layla screamed. Oh, I get it. Milan retorted. Your wolf submitted and went against you. She's recognized Saren as her Luna and her superior. She basically saved her own and screwed you over. Her wolf has blocked her out, Saren said. Athena is asking for mercy. She would never. Layla shouted. She is speaking to me and she said that she regrets ever being paired with a selfish and manipulative human counterpart such as yourself. She also says that she wishes she could see her mate one more time. So, you did have a mate, Milan said. Let me guess, you rejected him in hopes that Jasper would choose you. Oh my god, Saren gasped. What is it? I asked her. Her mate. Athena told me who her mate is, she looked at all of us with wide eyes. I can't believe you, she said to Layla. All this time, your mate, the one person who's wanted you, has been in front of you the whole time, and all you've done is him over? What is the matter with you? I don't want him. I want Jasper. He hasn't even accepted your rejection. Saren said making all of us stare at her. Dearest, what did you say? Her mate, he never accepted her rejection. It's a pack member. Milan asked and Saren's face saddened. It's someone we know, very well. What? Who? Milan and I asked. It's Darius, the castle guard. Milan, go get him. No. I, I, don't want to see him, Layla croaked. The blood loss was starting to get to her. He's not my mate. We're not doing it for you, we're doing it for him. He needs closure, I said to her. Milan, go, Milan ran out of the dungeon and we just stared at Layla. 
I realized that Saren was still and aped, so I had Olivia conjure up a shirt for her. Milan came back a few minutes later with Darius. Alpha, you wanted to see, Luna. Ah, T, I knew I forgot something, I muttered to myself. Luna? How? Later Darius, I said to him. Just don't tell anyone, that's an order. Yes, Alpha, he replied and looked at me. Darius, is it true? Was Layla your mate? Yes, Alpha. Why didn't you ever say anything to me? With all due respect Alpha, it was none of your business. Fair enough, I replied. Darius looked at a disfigured Layla, and all you could see was the hurt and pain in his eyes. Even after everything she did, and even with the way she looked right now, he still cared for her. You stupid, Milan said to her. You had a loving mate all this time, but you threw him away like he was nothing, and you inged up so many lives. Just like Tareen, all of this could have been avoided had you just given in to the mate bond, but no, you shunned the bond, and now, you're going to die because of it. Alpha before UK, LL her. There's something I would like to say to her, Darius requested. I nodded my head and Saren and I stepped back. He kneeled down next to her and touched her cheek. Even though she was covered in blood, missing a leg, and had lacerations all over her body, the way he looked at her was obvious. He thought she was beautiful. I forgive you, Layla, he said and stood up. Milan said under her breath, Layla Martinez, I, Darius Hoffman, accept your rejection, with that said, Darius left the dungeon, but as he passed me, I could see the tears in his eyes. I shook my head feeling bad for him. Alpha, do not worry, I won't speak to anyone about what I saw down here, he said as he walked away. We waited a minute until we heard the door close. You lost out Layla. Saren said to her. You could have had a loving mate, and could have been happy, but you chose to be greedy instead, and your actions have not only hurt the one person out there who loved you whole. Heartedly but those that supported you your entire life. You don't deserve happiness or love, especially for someone who has no soul, Saren went up to her and just shook her head. It never should have come to this Layla. I hope both you and your wolf can be reborn and live a better life, with a quick FL, CK of her wrist, Saren snapped Layla's neck. One enemy down, two more to go. Chapter 79 Megan's POV After K, Ling Layla, I felt relieved and yet, I felt like a dark cloud was looming over me. I never wanted to ever have to K, LL anyone but after everything she did to Jasper, me, and even Darius, I couldn't find it in my heart to give her mercy. I hated what I did to her, making her suffer that way, but Callie told me that it's what she and her wolf deserved. Callie was just as shocked as I was when Athena submitted and basically gave up Layla. I don't think I'd ever seen a wolf turn on its human counterpart before. After all that was said and done, Olivia changed me back and teleported home. Jasper and Milan went to go find Darius and to explain to him why I was there, or at least, why Saren was there, and make sure he didn't tell anyone. I went straight upstairs to get cleaned up from all of the blood that was on me. Kendrick got a hold of Svetlana, and she provided him with the same poison that she gave to Tareen that K, LLED his mom. Dylan ended up being the one to administer it. Because Tareen was already injured and completely comatose from the blood loss that was caused by the WH, ping, the poison hit her pretty quickly, but she still suffered for several hours before finally dying. Although Dylan wanted her to suffer more, her being a low-level Omega and already injured, her body was just too weak to fight it off the way Lizzie had. I honestly still couldn't believe everything those two had done. 
I was even more shocked when Kendrick and Jasper told me that Tarine had sold her son's life to Svetlana before she had even conceived him. I couldn't even fathom doing that to my pup, but she did it so easily. Jasper called Alpha Richard at Golden Moon and told him that one of his men was the father to Tarine's pup, and he agreed to search for him and bring him to our territory. Luckily, Svetlana didn't actually plan to take Killian. Once she realized that he had no ranked blood, she had no use for him. We were all sitting in Jasper's office with complete headaches after the day we had, and we were hoping that this day would end with that, but one could only hope. Ronan burst into Jasper's office and he did not have a happy look on his face. Dad? What's wrong? Jasper, I told the elders what Layla had admitted and they went back to Blood Moon immediately after I told them. They were already keeping an eye on them. They found the bunker. Why do I sense a but coming? Kendrick said. There were no humans on sight. What? We all exclaimed. Dad how is that possible? I don't know son, something wasn't right. There was no way that they could get rid of that many humans without being caught. They did something. We need to go over there, I say to no one in particular. What? They all respond. We need to go over there, I repeated myself. Saren, you can't go out in the open. Jasper, they did something to those humans. We need to find out what they did. Victor deserves answers. All those victims deserve answers. I shout at him. I get that, but you can't go out in the open. But I'm Megan right now. I know you want to go because you want to use your powers, but you heard Olivia. You can't use your powers otherwise the vampire can find you, I grunted in frustration and crossed my arms. Then it suddenly hit me. Wait, I'm not the only wolf with powers. I exclaimed. S.H., T., she's right, Kendrick said. Lorenzo is a primordial too, I watched as Jasper lifted his brow. Well, I guess I need to ask him for his help, Jasper said. I was about to say something, but he cut me off, the only problem is that I have no reason to go to Blood Moon, let alone take a complete stranger there. Son, I think Richard can take care of that one. With everything going on with Blood Moon, he's told me that several Alphas are wanting to pull out their packs with Ash. The only way to do that would be to have an Alphas meeting, Jasper responded. Jasper, we're also coming up on the one-year mark since we were last there, Kendrick said. S.H., T., Jasper looked straight at me and I frowned. You forgot, didn't you? I asked him and he made a guilty face. Oh my god, you did. I exclaimed. Forgot what? Kendrick asked and I looked straight at him. Oh crap, he shouted. Uh huh, care to share, Jason said, and I just looked at him as well. What? I hate all of you, I said and crossed my arms. What did we do? Milan and Melody asked. You guys, Jasper said to them. Saren's birthday is tomorrow, I saw the shock and guilt on everyone's face. Are we allowed to celebrate it? I mean, it's Saren's birthday and not Megan's, Melody said. That's beside the point, I grumbled and pouted. Jasper pulled me to him and made me sit on his lap as he nuzzled the crook of my neck. I'm sorry, Tink. Megan, did you want to do something low-key? Like a special dinner? Or we can go shopping, Melody said. She can't leave the territory you guys, Jasper said. We can take her shopping, Jasper. She was out in the open in her disguise for months even with the vampire after her, Milan said. That's before he knew of who she was before. Now that he knows what Saren looks like, it's only a matter of time before he figures out what her disguise is. 
Well, we can't not do anything for her birthday man, Kendrick replied. Why don't we have a barbecue in the afternoon tomorrow, Ronan said. We haven't had one since before Saren left, and it can be an impromptu birthday party for Saren, just without cake and presents. Tink, would that work for you? Jasper asked. I hated that I couldn't celebrate my birthday yet again, but it looks like I had no choice. I just nodded my head since it would just have to do. Jasper told William what he needed, and he agreed to help, however, instead of him going as himself, or even as Wayne, Olivia was going to change William into Kendrick. It's normal for an Alpha to take his Beta to Alpha meetings. He then called Richard, and he already knew of everything going on. I guess it helps to have friends who are elders. The Alphas that were at the meeting the same time Jasper found me last year would all be returning, and from what Richard told Jasper and Ronan, most if not of the Alphas are backing out of the packs to stay neutral with Blood Moon. I was a little annoyed that I couldn't be the one to take down Blood Moon, especially with all of the crap they had put me through for eight years, unfortunately, I had no say in the matter because I'm supposed to be gone, and Megan is still an unknown person. It wouldn't make sense to take Jasper's mistress to an alpha meeting. All I could do now was wait to hear back from them. Jasper's POV Although we were unable to really celebrate Saren's birthday, I made sure she and I celebrated on our own after the barbecue in our room. It was mixed with a couple of gifts and lots and lots of pleasure. I had Saren, or should I say Megan screaming my name for hours on end. Thankfully, my mom was more than happy to take care of Sam for us that night, and well into the next day. I even skipped training because I was getting my own personal workout. I had Megan in all sorts of positions, turning her into a pretzel, and I have to admit, she's definitely flexible. I finally got word from Richard that the Alpha's meeting was set up at Blood Moon, and I heard that Kale was not happy at all. He was hoping the Alpha's meeting would be at another pack. I was certain he didn't want all the Alphas in the state coming to his pack grounds with everything that has been going on. When we got there, I was the third Alpha to arrive, and of course, the look Kale gave me was one of pure hatred. Not only did I take Saren from him, well, it's more on the lines she and I were destined for each other, but now she was gone, and I had my new chosen mate. Alpha Jasper, Kale gave a half bow with his head but refused to shake my hand. His sister and mother were with him when he greeted me, and Emma had hearts in her eyes. Alpha Ash, it's been a while, I retorted, and I heard him give off a small growl. You remember my beta, Kendrick. How could I forget, he basically snapped at me. This ER was in for a rude awakening. Jasper, I can show you to your room, Emma said seductively. That's Alpha Jasper to you, Kendrick said to her, making her scowl. Are we staying in the rooms as last time? I asked her and she nodded with a smile. No need to show us then, I remember where they are. I replied making her frown. Come on, Ken. Right behind you, he replied. We made our way into the main pack house, and straight to the room I stayed in last time I was here. It immediately brought back memories. I smiled inwardly as Kendrick and I got settled in my room for the night. Some of the Alphas wouldn't arrive until late since they had a farther drive than Richard and I did. Before I could even put my bag down on the bed, there was a knock on the door. I got it, Kendrick said and opened the door. Can I help you? Ah, it's only been a year. Don't you remember me? I heard a female say to him. Kendrick turned around and looked at me confused. Sorry, but am I supposed to know you? He asked at the female Omega. Seriously? she exclaimed. It's only been a year, and you already forgot, she practically yelled in his face. 
I knew then who she was and I just shook my head. Um, I get the feeling that something happened between us last year, and I'm sorry I forgot, but I am a happily mated wolf, and I also happen to be a father. What? She screamed. Sorry, he just stepped back and slammed the door in her face, and locked it. I watched as he shuddered and came over to me. I couldn't stop the laugher that came out of my mouth. What the hell happened here last year, he shouted at me. I think you know who to call, I replied. He grunted and made a video call. Hello. Beta. What the hell did you do here at Blood Moon last year? Whoa, what are you talking, oh, sh, t, I busted out laughing. I knew Kendrick's man whoring ways would get into trouble. I just didn't think it would get him into trouble with this doppelganger. How many beta? Uh, -huh, two, at, the, same, time. I beg your pardon. Look. I'm not proud of it, at least not anymore, but I was a man WH0 re before Melody, so sue me. Beta, I've been alive longer than the age of your pack members combined, and even I have never done that. I told you, man, I did some stupid SH, T for seven years of my life, and I'm not making excuses, but I had needs as a single unmated male dominant wolf and I fulfilled those needs with multiple women at the same time. Just tell them I'm mated with a baby, they'll back off. I've already done that, and instead of backing off, one of them got angry. Did you promise something you weren't supposed to? Why the hell would you think that? Oh, I don't know, her thoughts. I sat on the bed and just watched as William and Kendrick argued back forth about the mistakes Kendrick made while we were here last year. I couldn't help the inward laughs that came about thinking about everything. After another 15 minutes of Kendrick and William arguing, they finally hung up and all William could do was a grunt in frustration. Alpha, how the hell did you make that IT your beta? I question that all the time, honestly. But, Kendrick and I grew up together, and we've been best friends since we were little. That includes Jason and Milan. And, believe it or not, Kendrick is an excellent beta, when he's thinking with this head and not with his D, C, K, he just rolled his eyes and shook his head. Hopefully, you don't have to fight off of Kendrick's other one night stands he had while we were here for three days last year, but we do have a job while we're here. He nodded his head and we talked about our plan. We had less than 48 hours to find the remnants of the humans that Blood Moon had kidnapped other than what the investigators found a few weeks ago. Hopefully, William's powers will come in handy while we're here. Chapter 80 William's POV When Jasper brought me up to speed with his plan to find the evidence of Blood Moon being behind the human kidnappings, I was more than happy to lend my assistance. After seeing what had happened to Victor, and what Svetlana and her accomplices had done, I wanted justice for the humans as well. Regardless of who or what, I am, even I know what happened to the humans was unjust and Blood Moon needed to pay. Svetlana was already presumed to be dead after the vampire apparently k, l l e d her, even though we all knew the truth. When we got to the Blood Moon territory, and I had to fend off several she-wolves who had apparently had a relationship with the Beta, I wanted to call it quits, but that was until a certain Omega caught my attention. She looked terrified, and she was not acting like a werewolf, even though she smelled like one. She was definitely young, and by the way, she was interacting with pack members, she was nervous, almost too nervous. When I made eye contact with her, that's when I heard her thoughts loud and clear. God, how many of these things are going to show up? I hope they don't try to K-L-L me and the others. And what is up with this guy? Why is he staring at me like he wants to eat me? Oh God, is that why all these things are showing up now? 
Are we going to be eaten? My life. First I'm kidnapped, then I'm imprisoned, now I'm one of them, and now I'm going to be eaten. What did I do in life to deserve this? Her thoughts made me my eyes widen in horror. They couldn't have. I need to speak with this Omega privately, away from prying eyes and listening ears. I needed to tell the Alpha what this Omega just thought. Saren's plan to use our powers to learn the truth was a good call, and even a better call on the Beta to use me in his place disguised as him. I walked out of the foyer in search of the Alpha and found him behind the packhouse at a small pond. At first, I thought he was enjoying the scenery, but when I got to him, I saw the hurt in his eyes. Alpha? Is everything okay? I asked him. Did you know that Saren used to have to bathe herself in this pond? Excuse me. When Saren was enslaved here, she was given a shoe closet as a room, a cot as a bed, and this pond as her bath. She used the half-bathroom to brush her teeth and use the toilet, but when she needed to bathe herself, she had to this pond year-round. Yes, she did tell me, I replied, and looked towards the pond with him. We stood there in silence for a few minutes before I made him aware of what I had found out from the thoughts of that Omega. The look he gave me was one of sheer anger and disbelief. Are you telling me that Blood Moon turned the remaining humans, he asked while gritting his teeth. If the thoughts of that Omega are true, then yes, it appears that way. Are they insane? They turned random humans to avoid scrutinization. Alpha, you are aware that that means at least half of the remaining humans are dead. Not all humans are meant to turn, and many die during the process. He turned back to the pond, his eyes black as ebony, and his body shaking in rage. I cannot believe how corrupt this pack is. It's no wonder that none of the ranked members in this pack have found mates. They were never meant to, he said out loud. What is the plan? I asked. We need to find that Omega and we needed to talk to her. How do you propose we do that? I asked him. Simple, I'm going to s. Adduce her. Excuse me. I was shocked at what he said. I'm still an unmarked male, and everyone thinks that I have a mistress as my chosen mate. I'll do whatever it takes to get that Omega alone with me. Even if it means ruining your image. It will only be ruined temporarily, and it's a risk I am willing to take to take down Blood Moon and Ash. Very well. I need you to project an image of her to me, he said, and I nodded. Just as I was about to project the image of the Omega, we heard screaming inside of the pack house. Jasper and I ran as quickly as we could, and when we got there, there was a fight in the middle of the foyer. I told you not to touch me. Jasper and I pushed past the crowd and found Emma and the Omega I was telling Jasper about in an all-out fist fight. Alpha, that's her, I whispered to him. You ungrateful little cunt. Emma screamed at her. This is my house. You will do as I say. You. I never asked to be here. None of us did, the Omega screamed. What is going on down there, we heard shouting from the stairs. Kale came down and saw the B.Rawl between his sister and the Omega. Ash, you need to do something about this. Emma, what is going on, he asked her. She slapped me. Emma complained. You shoved me the floor. You may have taken my life away from me, but I'm not a pushover. I don't care who you are. Respect is earned, and B is like you that think they're so high and mighty don't deserve an ounce of respect from anyone. You're a bully. And you pick on others and try to bring them down because your life s. Ux. I heard your father is in prison who apparently bragged he would have easily k. lled you with his bare hands if a woman he loved had asked him to. Your mom is a two-time loser, 
you rely on makeup to look pretty when all you look like is a caked up clown, and your brother is supposed to be the leader of this said pack can't lead for sh, t. I like this one, I whisper to the alpha, and he just nods. This human turned werewolf had sass to her, and she had a fighting spirit. I don't care who you think you are, Emma, but you can't keep all of us quiet by bullying us. The truth is going to get out, and I pray to God that I'm here to see you burn in hell. You. Emma shouted and tried to hit the Omega, but she dodged and slapped Emma again. Oh, everyone exclaimed when Emma hit the ground. You. Kale shouted at her. You? Is that the best you got, the Omega sneered at Ash. Of course, it is. You don't know my name. Why would you, she said and shoved past him. He grabbed her arm, and it looked as if he were about to strike her. If you hit that Omega, I will see to it that you are brought before the council, Jasper said to him and stepped forward with my following close behind. Did you forget that there are other pack leaders here, Alpha Ash? Ash's eyes looked around and he could see the other Alphas and Betas looking at him with disgust. He dropped his arm and let the Omega go. I guess things haven't changed at this pack, have they? Abusing pack members must be one of your not so many talents, Kale growled at Jasper and stormed back upstairs. The Omega took that opportunity to leave the pack house through the front door and the crowd then dispersed. What caught my attention was that no one bothered to check on Emma to see if was okay. Not that I could blame them. I didn't even know the child, and I already disliked her and her I'm the best, att, tood. Jasper and I decided to follow the Omega to see if we could get her to talk. Unknown Omega's POV my life had taken a turn for the worse. For months I was caged up like some kind of a animal along with about three dozen others. I didn't even know where I was, let alone how I had even gotten here. All I remember was going to the mall with my friends, after track practice, and the next thing I knew, I woke up in a cage with no memory of what happened. Little by little people started to disappear and never come back. First, it was about a dozen, then two months later, it was three dozen. With however many were taken away, a few more would come in their place. Everyone's story was the same. They would be taken from a school or home, and they were always alone or at least had someone with them. But for some reason, if they had someone with them, that other person wouldn't be with them. We feared the worst and it was sad to say that we were more than likely right that anyone who wasn't in prison with us was K, LLED as collateral. They kept us alive, by feeding us once a day and keeping us hydrated with one bottle of water a day as well, but that was about it. I was a track star, with a full ride scholarship. I was built like a runner with Thunder TH, GHS and a rocking body, now, I'm just skin and bones. For months it was like that, then out of nowhere, Emma came with a couple of others, and they started to bite everyone in the cage. The burn that came from the bite was excruciating, and I swear I thought I was going to die. For endless hours, people were throwing up, having the chills, the sweats, fevers, and seizures. I would have to say out of the four dozen of us that were left alive, at least one third of us didn't make it after we were all bitten. The next thing I knew, I woke up with a splitting headache and someone speaking to me in my head. I thought I was going crazy when she told me what happened to me. Those ERS turned me and the other survivors into monsters. We were all werewolves now, and now, we couldn't go back to our families or even the authorities. Who would believe us anyway? Werewolves were fiction and we would all be mocked for reading too much Twilight. Even then, Emma and her brother, or the Alpha as he calls himself threatened that if any of us tried to leave this place, they would hunt down our families and K.L.L. them. After not seeing what happened to everyone who never came back, 
those of us who survived being turned kept our mouths shut. Three weeks, of this new life, and I wanted to die more than anything. I didn't even want to go home anymore, but my subconscious, or my wolf as she keeps saying she is told me that we had more to live for. Every time she speaks to me it feels as if she's real, and she keeps saying she is, but how am I supposed to believe that? How was I supposed to believe that I was a monster now? Why me? Why did I and some of the others survive, the rest didn't? What kind of life was I going to live now? We can help you, I turned around when I heard a voice. I saw the same man who helped me before. Who are you? I shouted and backed away. Calm down, he said with a soothing voice. We want to help. How can you two possibly help? You're one of them, I spat. And so are you, he said to me with a straight and serious face. No. I'm not. I am not one of you. I am human. I screamed. Whether you accept it or not, you are a werewolf now, and we know that it wasn't by choice. How could you possibly know that? Because we know that Kale or his sister turned all of the humans they kidnapped as an offensive move to avoid criminal charges by the Elder's Council, he replied. The what? We will explain in more detail later, but I need you to trust us. Why would I trust you guys? I don't know you. Because we want Kale and his pack to pay for their crimes. What happened to you and the other victims was unjust and we want justice for all of you, the other guys with black hair said. What they did was out of pure greed and selfishness, and it was highly illegal in our world. Just like humans, we have laws we have to abide by or face the wrath of the elders of our kind. They are some of the oldest and strongest of us, and we do not show ourselves to humanity unless there is a good reason. And what reason would that be? I asked curiosity getting the best of me. Again, that's for a later time, the smooth talker said. Look, we know that this is a lot to handle, but I think we can help each other, the smooth talker said. I looked at him and rested my tongue in my cheek. How? I asked without even thinking. Simple, we want Blood Moon to pay for their crimes against humans, and my pack and I know you and the other humans who were wrongfully victimized by them want revenge. We need you and a few of the others to stand as witnesses against them. They threatened to K.L.L. our families if we told anyone what they did to us. They're bluffing. You can't possibly know that. We do know because Kale and his pack have been under investigation for just over a month now, and as I said, they turned you as an offensive move to lead the investigation in another direction. But if you and a few others who were turned stand against them, then Kale and his sister will be executed for their crimes, so will anyone who took part in turning you and the others. The rest of the pack will be dismantled and banished. Banished. They become rogues wolves. Basically, they go to the bottom of the hierarchy of our kind. They become trash and filth. Other than death, it's the most humiliating thing one of our kind can go through. How do you know that they won't go after our families? 1. Your families are more than likely spread out across the country, so it would be difficult to find all of them and cause them harm. 2. Killing humans is against our laws, for anyone. Even rogues. 3. This entire pack is currently on lockdown. No one is allowed to leave until the elders give them permission, I just blinked at these two guys standing before, trying to take in everything they just said. I understand that you're apprehensive, given what you have gone through, the one with black hair said, but we promise you that we'll get justice for you and others, all you need to do is trust us and get at least two more people to stand against Kale and his pack for what they have done. You said the pack would be dismantled, and everyone who wasn't involved in our kidnappings, and S.H.T. would become rogues. 
Does that include me and the others? Not if I can help it, the smooth one answered. As an alpha of one of the largest packs in the central United States, I can give all of you sanctuary in my pack. Now that all of you are werewolves, you're protected by our laws now. What do you mean? Originally, if you all were found as humans, the elders were going to pet, shun to have all of you k, lled because you knew of our kind. They were afraid of exposure, but turning you, saved your life. What about the others? The ones that didn't survive being turned into werewolves? What about them? I cried. We get justice for all of them, the one with black hair said. And you and the other survivors, I looked at these two guys and for some one reason, I felt like I could trust them. We've been standing here for at least 30 minutes, and they have not done one thing to try and hurt me or command me to do anything. You can trust them. God. You, again? Why do you hate me? I'm a part of you. I don't know you. I am another version of yourself. We share a mind, and we are one. I'm your friend. How can I trust them? What if they're baiting me? They're not. The one with teal eyes, he is a very strong alpha. His aura is much stronger than our alphas. And the one with black hair, he's just as powerful, and his eyes tell the truth. They want to help us and our other friends. I take it you were communicating with your wolf, the smooth one said. I nodded my head. Can you promise to give us a home? I asked with tears in my eyes. I can and I will. Just ask Victor. Victor? Wait, I remember him. He was taken around the same time I was, but he left and never came back. He's alive, and he's at my pack right now. He's been with us for months, and it's because of him that we figured out humans were being kidnapped and being turned into fake wolves with the use of dark magic. What? Is that what happened to the others? Yes, and sadly, we didn't know until my pack was attacked for the second time, he replied with a guilty look on his face. You guys K, LLED the others. We didn't know that they were human not until we captured Victor and he told us what happened to him. His predicament is how we were able to figure out what was happening. It was the Dark Witch who turned them who told us that it was Kale and his sister who kidnapped you all. You really want to help? I asked, and they both nodded. I took a deep breath and let out a deep sigh. After thinking about it for a few minutes, I finally nodded my head. They both smiled at me sincerely and put their hands out. I shook both of their hands and smiled back. My name is Jasper, Alpha of the Blue Lake Pack. And this is Lorenzo Rossi, the smooth talker said. Lorenzo? I heard people calling you Kendrick. It's a long story, but I need you to refer to me as Beta Kendrick as well until we get you out of here. I promise to explain everything once we are all safe at Blue Lake, the one with black hair replied and I just nodded my head in understanding. What's your name? Jasper asked. Kelsey. Chapter 81 Kelsey's POV Kelsey, are you out of your mind? Brent is right, Kelsey, why would you tell two strangers about us? Do you not remember what Kale and Emma said to us? You guys, I trust them. They have nothing to us since they arrived yesterday, and they told me that they have Victor. I tell Brent and Lisa. Victor, isn't he the football player that never came back several months ago? Brent asked. Yes. How do you know they're not lying? Lisa asked. Lisa. How would they know his name if he didn't tell them himself? Brent and Lisa paused a minute, looked at each, and then back at me. You guys, he's still human too. He's free to roam around as he pleases. 
This Alpha Jasper is 10x better than ER that has us here basically as hostages, treating us like slaves. And what about our families? Brent asked. Alpha Jasper says that Kale is bluffing. He can't go after our families because it's against werewolf law. Kale and his sister were probably betting on us never knowing these laws since we're too new to this kind of life. But Alpha Jasper and his beta, Kendrick, have done nothing to suggest they're playing me, or us for that matter. We can get back these ERS who ruined our lives. What about us? Are we allowed to go back to our families? Jasper says that we can't because we've been pronounced dead to everyone. What? They both exclaimed. Apparently, there were news articles about us all having gone missing. And a few days after our abductions, fake bodies of us were being found. What? So, our families think we're all dead? Lisa asked and I nodded. Why us? Brent asked. Why did you come to us? Because you two are the only ones I know that are willing to stand up to Kale and his sister, regardless of the consequences, I tell them. They looked at each other again. Brent has already gotten into so many fights with Kale since he was turned, and Lisa fights with Emma and a few of the other pack members, as they call themselves. Brent was a heavyweight boxer in training, and Lisa's dad was a marine who taught her to fight dirty when she had to. We all came to the conclusion that our individual SK, LLS were rendered useless because we were fighting against werewolves while we were human, but now that we're werewolves too, our SK, LLS were amplified. You guys, this is our chance to get retribution for what happened to us, our friends, our comrades, our families, and our significant others were who were murdered in cold blood, I say to them, pleading with my eyes. They look at each other again and then back at me, and finally nodded. What do we need to do? Brent asked. Nothing, Alpha Jasper has a plan in motion, all we need to do is be there when the time comes, they both nodded, and now, we just had to wait. Jasper's POV The Alpha's meeting was underway and I had finally got word back from Kelsey that she found two other humans turned werewolves who were willing to stand as witnesses against Kale and his pack for they've done. They weren't going to get out of this. Especially since Richard made sure to have the elders' council present for this meeting. I was surprised to see that see all six elders that made up the council were present. These old men were not to be messed with. They were the oldest and strongest of all of us. Handpicked by the moon goddess herself to lead our kind. They were stiflers for our laws and did not let anyone get away with breaking them, especially the ones that Kale had broken. I loved seeing the nervous look on this kid's face. Having the elders' council present was no small thing, and he knew he was on the chopping block. Alphas, please, calm down. Richard said. The entire room was in a commotion given all the speculation regarding Blood Moon. After a second, everyone became quiet and we gave all of our undivided attention to Richard who had Elder Jonah next to him, head of the council. As you are all aware, there has been some troubling news regarding Blood Moon, and we are all here to determine whether we are going to stay neutral, or if we are going become rivals, Richard said. Last year, many of us had already withdrawn our neutral packs, so, this meeting is to also determine if you will stay rivals or move to be neutral again. We will start with Alpha Xavier of Midnight Moon. I choose to remain rivals, he responds. Very well, Alpha Matthew of Red Moon. I choose to change from neutral to rivals. Understood, Alpha Baron of New Moon. I choose to stay neutral. I see, this went on for over an hour as all of the Alphas took their turn. Unsurprisingly, everyone who had chosen to become rivals last year stayed rivals, and four out of the six that stayed neutral changed to rivals, and leaving only two remaining neutrals. 
That gives us with ten rivals and two neutral parties, Richard concluded with Elder Jonah made note of it all. I can't believe you traitors. Kale shouted after the voting concluded. Alpha Ash, you are the traitor, Xavier said. Rumor has it you've kidnapped humans without cause, and even K, LLED countless others. I don't know where you've heard these rumors, but that is not true. Kale shouted. Then what about the investigation reports that indicate human remains and DNA were found in and around your territory? Alpha Chuck of the Blood River Pack asked. Those are lies. Everything has been fabricated. No humans were ever found. Kale replied while seething in anger. That's right. Keep talking. It will make exposing you that much sweeter. All of this started because of my father and his selfishness, but that does not mean that I am like him. I don't obsess over a woman who doesn't want me and tries to K-L-L her mate. I run a tight-knit pack, and none of my pack members would ever do anything that has been implied through these rumors you have heard, perfect. Speaking of pack members, I say and gain everyone's attention. The Omega from last night, the one Emma got into a fight with, who was she? Why do you care Alpha Jasper? he asked me with disgust. Well, I don't remember seeing her last year, and she didn't seem to know who I was so that only means that she's new. I don't know what you're talking about, he quickly replied in a defensive tone. You know as well I as do that any new pack members have to be registered with the council, I said to him and his eyes immediately widened. This is true, Elder Jonah said and looked at Ash. Though I have no recollection of Blood Moon ever registering any new pack members, within the last year, whatsoever. That, that, that was my father's responsibility, but after he was arrested, I have not delegated that task anyone. Alpha Ash, Eric was arrested months ago. Are you saying that you have new pack members that have not been registered within the last few months? Uh, I mean, I... No, I have not, he stuttered. Elder Jonah lifted his brow. Well, I happened to meet the Omega from yesterday, Elder Jonah, perhaps we can call her in here to get to the bottom of this. I suggested to him and he nodded. Wait. You can't. Kale shouted. And why pray tell not? Jonah asked. Are you defying an order from an elder? he growled. No, it's just that. If you have nothing to hide, then bringing in the Omega to clear up her story shouldn't be an issue, I say to him. His eyes are black with rage. That's right, get angry, because I'm about to ruin your entire life. Alpha Jasper, will you please fetch the Omega? Jonah asked and I nodded. Kendrick, go fetch her. Yes, Alpha, he stood up and left the conference room. I could feel all eyes on me, and one pair, in particular, was burning a hole into my head. A few minutes later, Kendrick, or in this case, William came back with Kelsey and two of her friends. Beta Kendrick, who are the other two? Richard asked. Well, when I went to fetch the Omega... Her friends were with her and she asked if they could come too. I see, Richard replied. I looked at Kale and his face was turning white. Young lady, my name is Jonah, and I am an elder. Hello, my name is Kelsey, and these are my friends, Brent and Lisa. Kelsey, would you mind answering a few questions for me? Jonah asked. I forbid you from answering any questions. Kale shouted. I forbid you from forbidding her. Jonah shouted at him. Who are you to stop an elder, he growled making Kale cower. My apologies, Kelsey, will you please have a seat? Yes, sir, she said as she and the others sat down at the table. What would you like to know? First of all, where were you born? 
I was born in Houston, Texas, her answer immediately gained everyone's attention. Why are you here at Blood Moon? Uh huh. Blood Moon, she gave a quizzical look and that alone made all of the alphas shift their gaze to her. Blood Moon is the name of this pack, Jonah said to her. Oh, I, um, I came here about eight months ago. Brent was already here, and Lisa came a few months later. I see, Jonah replied and looked at Richard. Both of them had a look of suspicion on their faces. Kelsey, my name is Richard, do you remember me? I was here last year. I'm sorry, but I've never seen you, sir, she replied. Good, that means it proves she came after the last Alpha meeting, and that she was never registered with the Council as a new PAC member. That's strike one for Ash. Young lady, how old are you? Jonah asked. Nineteen. And have you met your mate yet? My what? She gave a look of confusion. Unfortunately, she really didn't know anything about mates, yet. I'm sorry, but I'm still new to this whole being a werewolf thing, she said while waving her hands. We all are, she continued pointing to Brent and Lisa who just nodded in agreement. I looked at Kale and saw his face turn even whiter. Kelsey and her friends just gave away that they're newborns. How new? Jonah asked, his eyes completely black. Um. A month. Kelsey replied fear laced in her voice. Kelsey, I'm going to ask you this once, and only once, how did you get here to Blood Moon? Jonah asked gritting his teeth. He already knew the answer, but he needed to hear it from her. I watched as Kelsey moved her gaze to Kale. And the glint of pride in her eyes to let him know that she was not afraid of him. I was kidnapped, along with countless others some of which left and never returned, with her response came with an uproar from the other alphas and all of the elders in the room. Kale Patterson. You are a disgrace to our kind. Jonah roared shaking the entire room. No. She's lying. They're all lying. We're not lying. Lisa shouted. You and your sister kidnapped us. We watched as you turned all of us against our will, almost all of us died because of it. So, you turned the humans to try and prevent the council from finding out what you did, I said to him as I rose to my feet. He didn't just turn us. Brent shouted. That ER threatened to hurt our families if we spoke of this to anyone. Jonah didn't even speak, and neither did the other elders. All of their eyes had clouded over, and at first, I thought that they were mind-linking each other, but when their eyes turned back to normal, we could hear screaming from outside. Just then, Emma and Nicole came in. Ash. We're being attacked. Emma shouted. Before Kale could even say anything, both she and Nicole were apprehended. The wolves who had them were all dressed in armor. Oh. I muttered. Jasper, what is going on? William asked. Those are guards of the council, I answered, and he just looked at me, their hand-picked warriors from packs all over the world to serve the elders. They're literally some of the strongest werewolves in existence, that aren't rare, I say and look him up and down. Ash. Do something. Emma shouted. Kale stood frozen in his SP0T. Then two more guards came in and went straight up to Kale and arrested him as well. Ash. What is going on? Nicole shouted at him. From this moment forth, Blood Moon is to be dismantled. Jonah commanded. Kale and Emma Patterson, you are both hereby sentenced to execution for the unlawful imprisonment, murder, and turning of over six dozen human beings. What? Emma screamed. Ash what have you done? Any and all pack members that were involved in the kidnapping, murder, 
and turning of the humans are to be executed alongside them. All other members are to be banished to become rogues. Elder Jonah, I got his attention. Yes, Alpha Jasper. The humans that were turned, they're victims in all of this. They should be shown leniency. I agree Jonah, Richards said. Alpha Jasper is correct, any of the humans that survived the turn are victims and should not be punished for something that they had no control over. What do you propose? Jonah asked. They cannot return to their human families, the risk of exposure to our kind is too great. That is true, however, there is nothing in our laws that prevents them from moving to another pack. I can take them into Blue Lake. I will also be willing to take them to Golden Moon, Richard chimed in. We made eye contact and I nodded my head at him. I was definitely grateful for his cooperation in all of this. He's a good man and even a better alpha. Even though my pack is larger than his, he runs a tight ship, and I know that some of the newborns will be well taken care of at his pack. Very well, Jonah replied. I looked at Kelsey and her friends and they were all smiling at me. I turned back to Kale who was fuming at me. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that I was involved in all of this. As he passed by me, I grabbed his arm. Saren sends her regards, I whisper. His body starts to shake with rage. I told you once already, but I'll tell you again. She belonged to me long before you even knew her. She will always belong to me, with those final words, the guards pushed him, Emma, and their mother out of the conference room. I turned to William who had a smile on his face. I mentally thanked him for his help. None of this would have been possible had he not found Kelsey. One by one Alphas and their betas started to leave and the screams from Blood Moon Pack members were still going on. Kelsey, Brent, and Lisa, I turned to them. You three, as well as any others, are welcome at my pack, or Alpha Richards. Alpha, I would like to go with you, Kelsey said. If that is what you wish, I replied with a smile. I would like to join your pack as well, Lisa said, and I nodded. Brent. With all due respect, I think I would like to with Alpha Richard. My wolf is saying that his pack would be better suited for us. Brent, Richard said putting his hand on Brent's shoulder. I would be happy for you to join my pack, you look like someone who can fight, and I can always use well-trained men, Brent smiled and nodded. Kelsey, you and the others go rally up any of the other humans that were recently turned and let them know what is going on. Let them they have a choice between my pack or Alpha Richards. Yes, Alpha, Kelsey replied, and they all left the conference room. I turned to Richard and shook his hand, along with Elder Jonas. No words were passed between us, as we were all grateful that this ended relatively peacefully. At the end of it all, half of the humans chose to come to Blue Lake with me, and the other half went with Richard to Golden Moon. Richard did inform me that he was still looking for the guard who was mated to Tareen, but given how many guards he has, it was proving to be a difficult task. He did assure me that once Killian's father was found, he would let me know. Join our Facebook and WhatsApp group for more updates, link is given in description. Rest audio book will be continued in next episode.